Hi everybody, Rob Leach, Product Development Director for AirsWeb. Here today to talk a few minutes about something a little bit more technology based than usual. Here to talk about SQL database and a graph database. Don't get scared of everybody, not too much detail, but I think it's worthwhile discussing the differences and that one isn't leading to the other's demise or vice versa and that they can work together, but the only way they can work together is if you've designed it from the very beginning. So let's talk about SQL. Been here for 40 plus years. What does it do? It's a relational database. It's the workhorse of databases. It's where you store your data in lumps of, of, of data. So if, for example, a uh, filing cabinet. If you think of SQL as a filing cabinet with drawers and files and you can go and retrieve a piece of data, that's what SQL is great at. It's very good for structured table data with relationships defined. If your data doesn't change a lot, but you've got lots of data, SQL is great for it. Whereas graph, the other hand, and you can see by the diagram, is very much what's called node-based. You have nodes that relate to each other with behaviors. These particular, the key with graph database is that the actual behaviors, the relationships, are at the data level. They're not at the table level, that's as technical as I'm gonna get, but it allows you to have a very more dynamic structure. It's very easy to add relationships, it's very easy to add nodes. Um, the, the, the beauty of, as I say, for SQL is, is the workhorse. It's saving incident data, it's saving audit data, it's retrieving that data for you to look at. Whereas graph is talking about the relationships between the data. So in a good structured system, when you save an incident, it would go possibly as a blob in your SQL database, but it would also write the key elements of the data to your graph database and the behaviors and the relationships. So then you could go in and say, is this thing here related to this? Or I didn't know, this thing in the middle seems to be related to all of these things. I didn't know that. So if I look at this thing, it will tell me a bit more about all these other things. This has got an impact. Or did I know this is always related to by this? This is the bridge between the two. For examples, this might help you find out that a particular activity is at the center of all your incidents at a particular site. Or this causation actually precedes something that always happens further down the line. Through reading incidents or running a graph or some analysis, you wouldn't find that out. You need to traverse relationships to try and find what's called fuzzy nodes, um, and to try and find out how these nodes relate to it. Like I say, causation is a key one. It will help you the did you knows of this world. Did you know somebody bought this on Amazon? Whereas this is, did you know this cause is actually so busy in these areas when this contract is on site, when they're doing this activity? They're the relationships that graph exposes. That's the power of graph. It's not reading and writing lots and lots of data. It's the relationships between those data. That's the key. So again, this graph database technology doesn't mean the death of SQL and vice versa. They don't really do the same thing. If you do them properly, they work in harmony if your structure's engineered from the ground up. You can't bolt one onto the other. Not really good design. But if you start from scratch, these two technologies work seamlessly, but as I say, for different applications. Okay, I'm Rob Leach. Hope you enjoyed that. Thanks.